John Karabi. Well, the Scream, um, obviously, you know, um, <clears throat> was kind of a combination of two bands from Hollywood, Racer X, and the band that I was in. I was in a band called Angora, and um, we we're doing well, but my, my band kind of imploded um, <laughs> due to the same typical story that everybody has when they come to Hollywood. You know, there was like drugs and parties, and so my band imploded, and I kind of found this guy named John Greenberg that uh, he was I guess he was working with both bands a little bit and uh, he suggested that I start jamming with Bruce John and or now is Juan um, Scott Travis and so we put the scream together and uh, we got signed and then Scott Travis wound up getting the Judas Priest gig and we found a guy named Walt Woodward and um, it was just really exciting you know um, we did uh, as as a band that band we didn't do many shows we only did uh um actually we didn't do any shows we did showcases for record labels and we wound up getting a record deal on like four songs and then um we they just told us to go in and write and rehearse and you know get some songs together we had the great fortune of working with eddie kramer uh for a producer and we just had a blast doing the record. We went on tour and it was kind of a first for everything. It's like, you know, that, that so that one, old, that band will always be like a very fond memory because it's it was like my first, the uh, first recording deal, my first record, you know, first working with a major producer, first tour, first trip to England, you know, like all that stuff. And it was weird while we were on tour, um, somebody handed me a magazine um, I think it was spin magazine and uh, Nikki six was on the cover and they did a big interview with Nikki and then you know all through the interview and then they finally said to him like hey what are you listening to nowadays and he just went on this rant about this band the scream so um, we came home back to LA um, we, we had finished like a leg of a tour and our last show was at a place called the Marquee Club in South Beach somewhere. And uh, so I basically, I just kind of picked up the phone and made a few phone calls and tried to figure out Motley's management, whatever. And I just called to say, thanks for the plug in Scream Magazine. And um, I made the call, this girl answered. I said, hey, it's John Karabi. I would like to thank Nikki and the guys for the plug and spin yada 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 and I hung the phone up and I was literally walking out the door to go sound check and the phone rang again and it was Tommy and Nikki they called me right back and we talked for a minute and then they said hey Vince is out do you want to come down and jam with us on Monday this was a Friday and I'm like um, yeah okay and then it was crazy after that it was like five years excuse me five years of insanity so it was it was pretty awesome what i remember of it <laughs> it was pretty awesome i don't know i don't know what they were thinking i i i can honestly say uh when i went in and i don't mean this in any disrespect but uh, like if you l looked at my ipod um, I probably have 20,000 songs on my iPod and it's all like full catalogs of bands like Zeppelin, The Beatles, Humble Pie, Grand Funk Railroad, like all these 70s bands that I grew up, David Bowie and I gotta be honest with you, I, like, I, I mean I knew about the songs that Motley had on MTV or whatever but other than that, I was I was like, mm, you know, I was like the 80s thing kind of went over my head. Like I was more into what I grew up listening to and I didn't really change. It wasn't like I was, you know, when I was writing, I just write to write. Like I write the way I write, you know. So when they asked me, I kind of went in. I personally, I didn't think that I had a snowball's chance in hell in getting the gig because I didn't really know that much about them. I knew they were huge. 
and I knew the songs that I saw, like Feel Good and that stuff on the M MTV. But other than that, you could have asked me questions about them and I wouldn't have been able to answer it, honestly. I didn't have a clue. So I didn't have any expectations. And then I think they just wanted to work. Um, I think they just wanted to continue on and, and work. Uh, I don't know what the situation was with Vince, whether he got fired or he quit. But um, I think when I came in, I sang a few of their songs and I started with the covers that they did. Um, I did Jailhouse Rock because they recorded that one, Elvis song. And I did Smoking in the Boys Room, which I knew of their version, but the first time I heard it was a band called Brownsville Station in the 70s. So I said, well, let's do the covers and Helder Skelter. Let's do those first. And then if you've got any lyrics for your stuff, you know, I think I can get through it. So then we did like Shout and Feel Good and all that other stuff. But um, I, I don't think they, they were like, okay, this is cool. I, they were, I, I think, impressed with um, my voice. Um, I was kind of naive, you know, I was like, I, I didn't really take everything too serious. So I wasn't real nervous around them. Um, but then I think they started to see a different potential later on. Uh, the next day, they asked me to come back. So I came back and then the next day we did the same thing again and there was record people there and the lawyers and managers, all that stuff. And then they were gonna knock everything on the head and we started talking about jamming. Let's jam, you know, blah, blah, blah. And <clears throat> so we were goofing off with some stuff and Mick had a guitar there and I just kind of grabbed a guitar and I asked Mick if I could play one of his guitars. He said, yeah, and I started noodling around. And the other, Nikki and Tommy are like, oh, you play guitar? And I'm like, yeah, I've always played guitar. So then we started really digging in. And I think that first night, um, we pretty much started, if, if you've heard the record that I did with them, um, there was a song called Hammered. And we pretty much had about 80% of it done by the end of that night. And then they were just like, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out, you're the new guy. But I think the fact that I could play guitar and I could support Mick and that I was actually bringing ideas to the table uh, in a different capacity than what Vince did. Like as a writer, I think they kind of saw, I, I, think, I think they saw the potential of the band being able to open up and do more things, which I think was appealing to them. You know, honestly, I now looking back at it, I can't tell you what they were thinking. You know, it, it, it wouldn't be far-fetched for me to assume that they were going, well, we want to branch out and go in a different direction because all this new stuff is coming out, like Alice in Chains and Soundgarden and Chili Peppers. And, you know, um, maybe they just try somebody else to see it go in a darker, heavier direction. But from my point of view, we would just show up at rehearsal and um, just jam. And if somebody played a riff, whether it was Nikki, Tommy, me, whoever, Mick, we just jammed it, and if it felt good, that was what we worked on. And we wound up doing that for probably about eight months. We just wrote, and we had fun. And the other thing they told me was they wanted to make sure, like they didn't want to rush right into a studio with me, because they wanted to make sure that we all got along. Um, and again, this is their perspective. They told me that you know there was a little tension between certain members of the band and Vince. So they just wanted to make sure that I wasn't difficult or, I, you know, um, whatever. They just wanted to make sure that we we're like, you know, bros. You know, it, it's, it's really weird, but like I have a lot of friends that I don't want to say have a bit of a chip. But they have a bit of a chip on their shoulder about a lot of that stuff that was happening, like Alice in Chains and Soundgarden or Nirvana, especially. And but but it's 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 honestly been you know for me I'm you know I'm probably older than everybody in this. I'm definitely older than him. 
you know, if you go back and you look at the way the music industry, I think the music industry in itself tends to every so so often they tend to shoot themselves in the foot. And if we could go back and use the Beatles as an example, you know, the Beatles came out and they had such a huge amount of success that every record label on earth was looking for that new thing. And, but the, the Beatles were like, they were the, they were like the blueprint. We gotta have, you know, four guys or five guys with this haircut and da 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 da. And, you know, so then along came the Stones and along came the Who and along came the Kinks and, you know, uh, what it was, it, uh, the pacemakers, you know, and uh, like all these pop British whatever and you know and then i think what happens is the market gets flooded and convoluted with so many of those bands that whatever the new wave is has to come and kind of clear a lot of the other stuff away and then the good the i think the i think the really really good bands kind of rise to the top the ones that you know just do what they do um you know like i i see a lot of people especially when we were doing the second Motley record, Motley was so obsessed. Tommy and Nikki were so obsessed with everything that was going on. They were, they were looking at things like Nine Inch Nails and Marilyn Manson, and they were looking at all these things that were selling tons of records and using the loops and getting that industrial thing. If you listen to the second record, the second major record I did with them, wound up becoming Generation Swine. And I think they were so focused on trying to do something cutting edge or change their, you know, whatever. And and, it's, and I just firmly believe in, like, I think the bands that just kind of do what they do, you know, there's gonna be peaks and valleys. And if you just do what you do and stay the course and just keep plugging away, <laughs> eventually, you're gonna come back into in vogue again. You know what I mean? It's it's weird. Like I think these bands that try to find whatever, they're the ones that kind of fall off, and the and the and the originators for, for per se are the ones that kind of stay true. You know, Motley kind of they they faltered a little bit with when I was in the band. I admit it. You know, there was there was a lot of things on the first record that I did. The second record, I think they were just trying too hard to be something that they weren't.